Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Borderwise, and welcome back to another From the Depths subscriber craft review. Now this is just a quick little video for a small little craft that has been, once again, I have a bad habit of doing this, gathering dust on the shelf for the last two months. I feel quite bad about it because I have had a look at it before, I just haven't gotten around to making a video about it. And this is the HLAXJ-5 Pelican by Pros Parkour. I hope I pronounced that right. Pros Parkour. Yeah, I think that's the one. Hello, Seagull. And uh, the reason why I'm recording this particular thing right now is because I'm tired. I had a very long day yesterday and then I didn't get much sleep, so I don't think I have the endurance for an hour-long campaign episode or and something like that. I couldn't even come up with another example. So I'm already running on fumes, but you might be able to hear it in my voice. I'm a little bit uh, softer than usual. But enough about me, let's get to this thing. Now, I once upon a time wished I could make something like this because the good news is this thing is a helicopter and it actually looks like one. The bad news is it has all the weaknesses that you could expect from a helicopter. Now, to clarify that statement, before I say anything else, uh, Prosparkor originally submitted this craft to me as uh, when talking about a much bigger craft he was building, a destroyer, something that uh, can take on big Onyx watchships with these, and this is just a little backup uh, sub-vehicle that spawns in with it and just I don't know, it's the kind of thing that, I think it was the USS California who had something similar, just a little plane tagged on the back. That's just a little friendly sub-vehicle sidekick kind of thing, so the idea is the big vehicle draws all the fire and the sub-vehicle just gets in some extra damage just on the side. And that's fair enough, it can work against certain craft. And before I get into more into that, I'm going to look at the pros and cons. Well, the pros are quite simple. It's small, it's cheap, it's uh, only about... It's just shy of 11,000 materials. It's very good looking. It looks absolutely dope in my fleet colors, especially since I tweaked one of the colors to be more grayish. I really like how this looks. It's got a pretty decent frag gun on it. Uh, what? is this. This is a... You know what would be really good if the UI goes on now, because we want to look at stuff. 42mm frag gun, pretty decent rate of fire, 350 shots per minute. Actually does quite a lot of damage, like even against uh, something made of... ships made of metal, it can kind of chew through it. It's uh, got uh, decent missiles, they're not particularly freaky amazing ones. They've got short range thrusters, fins correctly set up, so you've got fins at the back, thrusters, fuel tanks, blah blah blah, one turn target prediction guidance, radar seekers, and that's pretty much it. It's pretty well armed, so to be perfectly honest, this craft is not designed to be shot at at all, because and here is where we get to the downside of this. It is extremely brittle. This is not like, well, a number of the airships that you'd find in the Grey Talons. This thing is not designed to take damage at all. The shields are, are really, I think, a just-in-case measure rather than anything else. And, well, it is made entirely of metal. And it even has some heavy armor in it. So if we open up here. Gods, it's so nice to just look at a small thing. It makes it so much easier to find stuff. It's got a bit of heavy armor in there, just so if the ammunition gets popped, it doesn't pop everything else. Although I think... Actually, one, one, uh, one, two, three. Okay, no, it won't pop anything else. It will blow it right in half, though. And uh, quite volatile. It's got uh, this frag gun right here. When that goes up, the whole thing goes up. More heavy armor here, stopping it from taking out the AI. But, um, yeah, not really meant to be shot at by anything, really. Because, well, as you can see, there is, here's, there is a jet and there is a jet engine between 
the outside world and the main AI. Or one layer of metal. That is nothing. If this thing gets hit, it dies. Simple as that. Or it uh, drops down into the water and then dies. And back here, you can see in the ammo, in the tail, this it's just one layer of metal over here. Yep, so it's just one layer of metal between this ammo and the big scary outside world and incoming heat shells, hash shells, frag shells, missiles, what have you. Speaking of missiles, I don't think this thing has any countermeasures at all. So it doesn't have flares, I have not seen it drop any flares, I don't think, nah, it doesn't have any. Uh, it doesn't have radar decoys, it doesn't have anything to defend itself against missiles. So it really does kind of rely on its, uh, on having a big friend to kind of draw everything. So there is that. It also has a habit of flying very low, so if Thank I do that, you'll notice that it's starting to drop in altitude quite a lot. Yep, it's gonna, it's gonna keep going down. And if this spawns too low, it kind of ends up in the water without any really good way to get out of it, so... Uh, I would recommend sticking... Uh, but that's the problem, this thing's so small there's not really room for it. I'd recommend sticking some kind of... There are ways to do it. You can just stick a control block on this that... Just cuts the propulsion if it gets too low, and that'll give the rotors time to pull it up out of the water. As you can see right here, you turn it off. So it's just, it's slightly unbalanced propulsion and that's probably just due to this thruster right up here. It's above the center of mass and center of drag, so it kind of tilts it forward. That's my main issue with a lot of, and if I try to make something that flies, it just unbalanced propulsion. The thing either goes into space or it ends up in the water. And what else, what else? Uh, the weaponry, the, it's a decent, it's a decent frag gun, as I said, it's a, Quite a long shell, actually, so quite a narrow cone angle, but I'm not going to knock it because it, it works. I've seen it work quite well. And the problem I really have is with the missiles. So if I can do clever things, clever things, I'm just going to quickly do this. Incidentally, this is a very good idea if you actually want to test weapon systems without firing absolutely all of them. Hello, I don't get control of any of the guns. That's nice. Where am I? Where am I? Where am I sitting? I can't get out. I'm just going to quickly replace this with something ugly. Pardon me, pardon me. Pardon as moi. Hello, Rambot. Dude. There we go. Hey, there we are. Sorry, that took so long. And so, missiles away. We are... Do, 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 do. So about less than a thousand meters range. So, I should mention that uh, in nowhere is it written that missiles have to be long range. But... My own personal preference is that they should at least be able to fly one kilometer, a thousand meters, before they crap out. Because, well, it's just anything less than that is really short, and they do need the extra range in order to chase things. And have I just completely thrown off the balance of this thing? Hang on, let's spawn it in again. Yeah, I'll show you what happens if it spawns in too low. If you're paying attention in a campaign, it shouldn't happen. So if you do this, and it spawns, and then kind of drops, and then you can see it kind of noses into the water a little bit. It's uh, managing to keep moving, and speaking of moving, and you stop right there. Incidentally, this, this is why I love anything with Deadly Blazers, because you can just turn them off and they stand still, unlike planes. And speaking of the rotors, I mentioned this thing is brittle. There's a kind of reason why, like, there are, I don't think there's any craft in the game which is a godly class helicopter. Actually, hang on, let's just check. Helicopters. Well, apart from the angry chicken. Okay, I stand corrected immediately. But, 
this is very, very fragile, which is why I said before, like good news, it's a helicopter, bad news, it's a helicopter. The rotors are really vulnerable, and they are quite often the first thing to get hit. Frag missiles will take the main rotor straight off. Uh, time fuse explosive shells, be they cram or APS, will take this straight off, and the thing will go straight into the water. It usually repairs itself, but there's the other problem. You'll notice in the right hand corner this thing only has 500 materials. This is not a craft that's meant for to be played with localized resource, and it means that in my testing, it tends to eat through its resources quite quickly, because you might notice if you stack this up here. It has a fair amount of ammo. It has... How much ammo does it has? It has... I'm trying to remember. Alright, so 27 ammo boxes. It's actually quite easy to tell because you can just look on the side there. It has a bunch of ammo processors and also I mentioned it RTG powered. And that I like. RTG powered little airplanes are fantastic because it means they don't need to carry fuel. It's very nice. Very nice indeed. And, what was I saying? Yeah, this thing is a bit of a materials hog. Or at the very least, just the, it's very small reserves, it burns through very quickly. Not really a problem if you are playing with centralized resources, but it is a bit of a problem just... Uh, it's the same kind of problem I've been having in the campaign with my own little aircraft, is that if you rely on ammo processors, well, like, you better be sure you're dishing damage, because otherwise you are just literally throwing money away, and that's no good. So, bears repeating yet again, this is not a craft meant to act on its own. It does not strike me as something that can handle a fight by itself. So, I guess final verdict is, like, I do like this thing. It is, an, uh, it is a rather cool little thing, but if you want to get it to be self-sufficient, you are gonna need to do a lot of tweaks with it. Like, this is this is a carrier helicopter, I guess you could call it. And to show you what I mean, oh goodness, I paused the game. Uh, I'm just going to blatantly throw it at something that, oh, I completely forgot to mention, this thing is not fast, and that is a bit of a deal breaker for me. Now, it goes just over 30 meters per second, about 32, will we make it to 33? No, we will not. Let's uh, stop you from flying all the way to the horizon. So this is, for me, I know this is a helicopter, but it's just not fast enough to be helpful because this thing will get shot down by anything. It can dodge the odd cramp shell, but if the... Oh, wait, no, there we... Oh, no, 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 it's 32.8 meters per second. It's what it was before. Did I mention I'm feeling brain dead? Because I really am. Uh, bears mentioning that any kind of timed fuse or missile, or goodness forbid lasers or particle cannons, will knock this thing clean out of the air. And just to show you what I mean, I'm going to throw something at this that really should not be able to take it down. Something like that. Paddle gun is not fair. Uh, Prowler, armed mainly with crams. Let's show you what happens. Admittedly, the Prowler is a lot more expensive than this, so... But it honestly doesn't make much of a difference. This thing doesn't... Like, this thing isn't durable enough or dodgy enough to last long when being shot at, so it's not like multiple of them make a huge difference. Why am I on board this thing, which I already know is doomed? I wasn't. And you see? Therein is the problem. That cram volley... If you set this up differently, if you say set it up with naval AI to orbit, or if you set it up just to be, I don't know, faster or fly at high altitude, it would probably not suffer like that, I suppose you could say. And once it's in the water, it's torpedoes away and that's it. So. I'll show you what I mean, and this is why I, incidentally, I cannot stand naval AI. No, I mean, not naval AI, aerial AI, I believe. I know it can be useful, but uh, I have never been able to find a situation where it'd be more useful than a naval AI properly set up. But yeah, that's just me. That is inherently my own bias. 
so you don't have to listen to me. So if we load this thing in, and this thing doesn't have any altitude thing, so let's use air and water mode, and we're going to quickly just modify it so that, yes, the area that I get out of here. Naval AI, and enter broadside below this range, what, uh, we're going to say 1000 meters, because of the range of the missiles, actually let's put that at 900 meters, I'm just messing about now, so let's put this at 91, what's our minimum range, zero, because this thing really doesn't care, idle approach distance, only circle, very tight, depth requirement, zero, disable reverse, DD, target prioritization, and we have some room here, and so here's a little trick I like to do, just to be absolutely sure that uh, this thing can fly over land, I do the same thing with a land AI, so land AI with almost identical settings, disable reverse, depth permitted, do -do -do, turning circle, I'll approach distance 150, point side range, and one, 900, and 1,000, that's the same as the other one, and I'm just going to save it because I think I might want to play around with this, like, do, like I'm dumb, I'm crapping all over this craft, I know, but uh, I should mention I like it anyway, it looks cool. Again, naval. And might need to adjust the shields as well. So if we hop on that, and if we spawn in the prowler again, you will probably see this thing will be a little bit harder to test. I forgot about the missiles. Nope, okay. Um, I guess armor on the back is a thing. Okay, so, uh, new rule. Uh, when I'm uh, half asleep, I shouldn't try to do anything to someone else's helicopter, because that's just rude. Uh, that's, uh, that's what it is. Yeah, it's, 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 where is it? Uh, we're just going to politely pretend that never happened. So, yeah. So yeah, oh dear, you can still see the uh, backside of the previous incarnation right there. Okay, so uh, that was, I guess that is a very good place to uh, stop before I embarrass myself further. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And I will see you next time in From the Depths, be it a subscribe review or something else. Farewell!